And this Torero team is, well, brand new. <laughs> I think there's no other way to really say that. that you have a lot of new pieces on this team, 10 newcomers onto the roster. Uh, last year, they were very senior heavy. Uh, Steve Lavin had to put this roster together pretty quickly. Um, a lot of grad transfers, a lot of guys who had experience, um, the Eric Williams, the Jaden Delayers, uh, Nick Lynch, a lot of these guys who came in and the hope was that they would be able to at least put together something solid uh, to for season one. And this team was, was, I think, what a lot of people expected. It just, it felt like, it felt like a year where nothing fit properly, which again, it makes sense for first year trying to clean the roster out, uh, see what you have, see what, what direction you want to go in. They were 11 and 20. They were four and 12 in conference. They finished in ninth just ahead of St. Uh, Pepperdine. And now you have a very young roster. Now you have a team that, maybe you're going to start to build off of. You have a team that hopefully plays some better defense. This was the worst team in the WCC defensively. Uh, they were they were last in opponent's field goal percentage, last in opponent three-point percentage. They were ninth in opponent's points per game. They gave up a ton of points. Now, the one thing on the flip side is that they did well is they took care of the ball. They were third in the WCC in turnovers per game at 115 uh, and considering the the pace in which they played, that act, that's pretty impressive. Uh, this was a team that scored seventy seven points per game, fourth in the league. Again, had like not they were they scored a lot, but they also gave up a ton. The fact that they only turned the ball over eleven and a half times a game was actually a pretty good indicator, I think, of what this team is going to try to do. Uh, but ball control is key. Uh, one of the guy, two of the guys that I think are going to be helpful on that front are guys who are coming back. Wayne McKinney, the third, uh, he'll be returning in his for his junior year, seven point four points per game a year ago. Uh, we, I really liked what he was able to bring his freshman year just two seasons ago. Uh, so I, I think this was he was one of the guys I really was excited to see going into last year. Uh, but there were a lot of, of older guys who were also on this team. Uh, that were seeing minutes, so that kind of took away some of uh, McKinney's opportunity. Uh, Chase Townsend was was around for a full season, and that was part of it. You also had um, <clears throat> you also had uh, Seku, who was also here um, at San Diego. So there was there were there was a kind of a log jam at the guard position, and McKinney got his minutes, um, but he I think he's going to have a better opportunity to do more uh, going into this year. Another one of the guys I think who's going to have more opportunity is going to be uh, Deuce Turner. This is a this is a guy who averaged nine and a half not nine points per game in twenty one minutes. Uh, he only started four games last year, but incredibly effective when he was in forty six percent from the field. Uh, he had a season high of twenty against LMU. There are only three returners, and so there so there's a lot of or sorry, there are not only three returns, there are a few more, but like these are the kind of like the two that really kind of are going to stand out and be, I think, the leaders of this team as we see what this team is going to turn into, what's the possibility, what's the potential of the San Diego team. And and this is going to and it's important for these guys to be leaders and show that leadership because you have nine freshmen on this squad. And a couple of them that I think are going to play pretty big roles early on. Uh, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Ola, Ola Dukin. Um, he is one of the guys from LA, very athletic, uh, six, nine forward. He was on the same, um, high school team as Bronny James. Uh, he, he's going to be a, he's going to be a player. He's going to be a guy who I think is going to bring a lot on the defensive end on the, on the front court, uh, very athletic. He he is still raw. I think he's pretty raw after seeing some of the video of him uh, from the past year. It, so it's going to be a work in progress, I think, for him. But I think it's going to be a work in progress for a lot of these uh, San Diego players because they're adjusting to a new league. They're adjusting to a different level of play. Uh, another one of those freshmen who is probably going to play a role pretty quickly is uh, Dragos Lungo, Lungu, uh, freshman 
out of Romania. He w- also played in the NBA Global Academy in Australia. Good shooter, really good shooter. Um, in the FIBA U18s this past year, he averaged 17.8, eight and a half rebounds, uh, six, five guards. Like he's going to be, I think, a, a big piece to what uh, this team is going to try to do early on. And he has he has success on the international level. He's had success overseas. Uh, so it'll be really exciting to kind of see how quickly he adjusts to the WCC. I think it's going to be an exciting thing for to see what he's able to do early on. And one of the things that this team does want to do is that they want to be able to run. They want to be able to sh- to put buckets it uh, to get some easy buckets. And one of the guys coming in who's probably going to be helpful on that front is a uh, PJ H- PJ Hayes coming in um, from Black Hills University. 42% career three-point shooter. He's coming in as a senior, so a guy with a lot of experience, a lot of games under his belt. Even if they are at a lower level, this is a this is someone who's going to be able to be be someone you can rely upon to get those to to hit those open shots when they become available. And I expect them to to become available in in this for this squad and for this team. So, so really big picture for San Diego is, is how these, how these freshmen develop, what are some of the pieces, what's going to help them get better. And I think it's just a matter for this team, building some confidence and getting some easy wins, getting some games that one are like good experience games, but then also ones that that you're going to have a chance to win. And there are plenty of opportunities for San Diego on their schedule uh, to be able to do that. Um, a lot, I think there are a lot of games that are going to be, that should be easy for San Diego to pick up. There are a couple of D2 games on there. So you kind of like take take those with a grain of salt, but there are also some opportunities for some really, really um, good games. They do play Stanford uh, in the non-conference. They're going to be at Stanford on December 3rd. So December is actually their big month of of big games. So they have going to be at Stanford. They're going to be at Utah State a couple nights later. Arizona State and Fresno State are also on the docket uh, during the month, during that last month before conference play. Big chances for for San Diego and really opportunities for them to get better before these sa- before they see these teams. Uh, just taking a quick look at that schedule, it's like this. I mean, this team is going to have some opportunity. to actually do well to actually get get some of those wins under their belts pause as i actually <laughs> pull up their schedule one more time um <clears throat> yeah that early month they have uc san diego jackson state they'll be playing navy uh northern colorado they'll have some pretty decent opportunities to pick up some wins uh san diego i thought did play played fairly well in the non conference a year ago but of course, completely different team. You can't really judge what San Diego did a year ago to what they're going to do now. And for for this team, I don't think you can have high expectations. And I think it'd be unfair to have high expectations of this team because of how much new there is, how much youth there is on this team. And you're going to have to be patient with this team. You're going to have to allow this to play out. I don't, I think San Diego, this is probably a two, three year project before this team is back to being competitive again, competitive as far as like being top half of the WCC at minimum. I think it's three years and it's going to be a matter of how quickly do these players develop? Who else comes in after this first crop? Who's who's the, who are the guys who break out and stand out? Who sticks around? Obviously, with the transfer portal the way it is, thinking two, three years down the road is can be a difficult uh, thing to imagine, think, thing to really wrap your head around. But that's what San Diego has to do. They have to think long term. They can't be impatient. They have to allow their players to develop. They have to allow this to play out. They have to allow the growing pains. And... I don't think it's going to go well this year because I think a lot of the teams in this league are just so experienced that their youth is going to be going to hamper them. 
I, d- I am picking them to finish last in the WCC. But it's going. they're going to have to fight through this. They're going to have to go through these growing pains to really to figure it out, to figure out how to to win, figure out how to play in this league. Uh, I mean, I think about just like what we've seen in some other sports, of, especially in baseball, like teams like the Baltimore Orioles this past, the last few years, where they were a 100-loss team just four years ago, and they won 100 this past year. So this is where I see like San Diego has opportunity, but they're starting from ground zero. And they're go- you're going to have to be patient. You're going to have to really be able to stomach some of these these growing pains and these tough losses. They're going to happen. You can almost guarantee they're going to happen. But hopefully with this group under Steve Lavin in a couple of years, this is going to be a squad that does look like something that is respectable and can really play a factor in the WCC race moving forward.